Unit 23, we look at a, one of the theories that helps us understand gases and their properties quite a bit. We'll eventually look at gases and how what the pressure volume temperature relationship is. But here what we want to do is look at sort of the molecular level, why the gases behave the way that they do. This is section 6.5 in your textbook, so you probably ought to take a look at that and read that before you go through this <coughs> too much. So let's take a look at the at the five premises we have in our kinetic molecular theory. The first one tells us particles of a gas, and these could be, by the way, this could be atoms, like in helium, non, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, those are all gases uh, in normal conditions. Or it could be molecules, like CH4, which is uh, methane gas, which is natural gas, uh, major component of natural gas, could be those as well. It's just these are particles flying around inside. What we say about them is that they're in constant, rapid motion, and they move in straight lines. Okay, and they just keep running back and forth. They hit each other, they rebound and bounce and that sort of thing, but Unless somebody's interfering, they're just moving along in straight lines. Second premise is that particles of a gas are very tiny compared with the distances between them. So it's a really, really long ways in a relative sense from one gas particle to the other. Mostly in a gas sample, it's going to be empty space. The third thing, the particles of a gas are very far apart, and thus the intermolecular forces are not important. There's a little attraction or repulsion between the particles of a gas. We've talked about the intermolecular forces, dispersion, dipole, dipole, and a hydrogen bond. We've talked about those. Those aren't too important in a gas since those molecules are so, so far away. What happens is the gas cools down, the molecules move more slowly, they get to interact more because they spend more time closer together. <coughs> and that's when the intermolecular forces come into play. The fourth thing is that the particles of the gas collide with one another and the energy is conserved in every collision. So the particles just bounce into each other, they bounce into the walls, they bounce all over the place. The kinetic energy is conserved in there. That's the kinetic energy is a measure of, uh, and the energy is conserved in, in those collisions. So you don't lose energy in those collisions. It's just distributed differently. And then the last thing is a temperature. And this is the absolute temperature, the Kelvin temperature, is a measure of the average kinetic energy, energy of motion of the gas particles. You may have seen a relationship for that in physics. We don't really care about it, but there's an energy of motion, a kinetic energy, and so the temperature okay, is a measure of that average kinetic energy of gas particles in that sample. So what we're going to do is take a look at a simulation. I seem to like these, don't I? It's another one of these FET ones. I'll put this link again out in, in the Blackboard item that leads to this. And we, what I'll do is I'll put a, I tend to like to use these. Uh, I don't know if you like these or not, but I tend to use these in here, but I want you to remember they don't prove anything because somebody programmed this to do exactly what we expect it to do. They're just a way of sort of visualizing how things are going to be. So let's take a look at a simulation dealing with gases like this. And as you look at this, you, very enticingly it says pump the handle. What that will do is put some gas molecules inside here. Now I can take this handle and I can pump it up and down like this a couple times. I see my gas particles inside the container. It looks pretty good. Measures pressure over here. Um, I can add heat to it. I can do all sorts of things in the sample. So what we want to know about is we want to think about this in terms of the kinetic molecular theory. So not too worried about numbers and relationships and things like that at this point. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do something to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Since we're going to ask you about some individual particle behavior, let's put fewer molecules inside here. So you watch these guys bounce around. And think back to some of the premises that we saw in the kinetic molecular theory. As a matter of fact, let's go back to that. Here, we go back one slide. Okay, and so we had here that particles of a gas, could be, it could be molecules or individual atoms, are in constant rapid motion and move in straight lines. So let's see if that holds up in our simulation. I had it when I started, right there. And so you see these guys over here bouncing around. As a matter of fact, if you watch it, we can pause it down here and I can take and go click, 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 click. You'll find these guys are going to keep moving in a straight line. Just pick one out and watch it. He's going to move in a straight line until he hits something else and he's just going to bounce. He can hit the wall, he can hit another molecule, he can hit anything else. But he keeps going in a straight line, kind of straight random motion the whole time. Okay, so that's that one. Now let's think about the second premise. The particles of gas are tiny compared to the distances between them. Well, that's going to be hard to show on this one because it's a real life thing we're looking at. So let's go back to the simulation. And so here's my 
particle right here, for example. Here's a particle. Here's a particle. If I took all these particles, I added them all, I shoved them all into a corner. They're just elbow to elbow, side by side. The volume of the particles in that container would be very small compared to the volume of the container. Does that make sense? It'd be very, very small. Now, in real life, it's even more uh, impressive than that because in real life, you can't see those molecules inside that box. So you add them all up in the corner, there's going to be very, very little uh, volume associated with those. So that, the second premise looks pretty good, too. Uh, third one, particles of gas are very far apart, and thus the intermolecular forces are not important. Well, think of it in these terms, that <coughs> as these go around the container, if they had strong intermolecular forces, if the intermolecular forces are important, then when like two molecules like these two right here get close together, you'd expect them to change their path. They'd be drawn to each other or repulsed from each other. But instead, they just go straight in until they collide, and then they bounce straight back off. So there's no intermolecular forces to speak of here. These particles don't know the other ones are there unless they actually hit it in the process of flying around the container. And so then let's go look at, oh, I, I had it again right there. Um, particles of gas collide with one another. The energy is conserved in every collision. And so if I look at this, have to go in motion to see it. But if you watch one of these particles in here, sometimes they get hit, and if they're going fast and they slow down, then the other particle goes fast. That energy is conserved the whole time. Basically, it's not just as simple as the speeds are the same when they come out. Their kinetic energies are going to be the same when they come out. And so that kind of verifies that as well. Then the last premise was that the average kinetic energy is related to the absolute temperature. So I took and I started to heat this guy up. Uh, let me see if I can see... Uh, I'll see if this will work or not. Uh, so up in here, I have the number of particles, certain kinetic energy, certain speed. Okay. So if I take a look at kinetic energy, kinetic energy is humming around here somewhere. My temperature is at 300 Kelvin. Uh, so this guy up here is around 1, 2, 3, 4, so about 4 lines high. If I take and I add heat to it and I bring him up to like 600 Kelvin, Something like that. Uh, it's not going to be evident because, yeah, it, it changes my, my histogram of that. Fundamentally, what I was going to try to show you, and it's not going to let me do that, is that if I double the temperature, I go from 300 Kelvin to 600 Kelvin, then I also double my kinetic energy. They're directly related to each other. And so it works something like that. Um, okay, and then come into here, so we looked at those things, and now let's take a look here, um, I already did that, we already talked about these, and that, and then, as believe it or not, we're at the end of unit 23.